Hey guys, welcome back to Dexter Ranch. Hope everybody's having a good holiday weekend. Wanted to make a video today about utter confirmation. Uh, when I first started putting the herd together, I all I really knew is that I wanted Dexter cows. Guys, if we can keep the moos to a minimum while we're filming. Good? Yep, let's, let's save those for a different time, okay? Thank you. Like I said, all I really knew is that I wanted Dexter, Dexter cows. And the first ones that I got was my black horned Dexter cows. And shortly after getting them, I decided that I wanted red pulled Dexter cows. And then after that, I figured out, well, there's two different types of pulled. And then I decided that I wanted homozygous pulled cows. Uh, and then I decided that I wanted uh, cows with an A2A2 milk gene. Uh, so it was kind of a rabbit hole that I went down. A lot of research, a lot of time went into figuring out what I wanted. And through all of that, I kind of missed one important thing, and that is utter confirmation. So I thought I'd make a video today for some of you that are out there putting your herd together right now. You can uh, get a little bit of knowledge on this, and that way when you go to pick out your cattle, you will be able to notice what is a good udder and what is a bad udder. Uh, so I'm going to flip the camera around, show you a few udders, and then I'll, I'll come back up and talk a little bit about, uh, you know, how you can go about selecting uh, your cattle while you're at the farms picking them out, and how you can make sure that you get a good bull that's going to produce heifers that will eventually someday have a good udder as well. Uh, so let's flip the camera around and I'll show you what I'm talking about go through the cows that I've selected to use as examples for this video from best to worst by the book. And the reason I say by the book is because there's always a little bit of personal preference. Uh, so I'll comment along the way as to what my personal preference would be if I could just draw a cow and make it come to life. Uh, but this cow here is probably the best example for by the book that I have on the farm. Her teats are nice and cylindrical all the way down. They're uniformly spaced on the udder. Uh, they hang nice and vertically. If there was a problem with the median suspension, meaning there was a, a suspension problem in the middle of the udder, the teats would be hanging like out towards her legs. Uh, but these hang nice and vertically. Uh, the suspension is good all the way across from the front to the middle to the back. Um, there's just not much you can say that's wrong with this udder. It's just a really good example. As far as personal preference goes, I wish I could see more of the bag. Uh, she does have a calf on the ground, so she is producing milk. But as she walks by... You just can't see much of the bag at all. And as a personal preference, I would rather see more of the bag. But with that being said, she she has a great udder on her. And like I said, probably the best on the farm. This is the first one's older sister. She's a year, year and a half older than the first one. Uh, this is my other black cow on the farm, the black horned one. Uh, she's also got a, a very good looking udder. Uh, not much I can complain about here. The back teats hang a little bit lower than the front teats, which maybe indicates that there's some suspension being lost in the back. Uh, but it's also possible that the calf has just emptied out those front quarters. Uh, nonetheless, it's a, a really good looking udder. One thing I do want to point out though is my two black cows here were put at the front of the list and have what appear to be the best udders on the farm, but their calves do not grow near as quickly 
as the red cows do. Uh, that's just how it is at my farm. Not saying that that's anything to do with red or black cows. Uh, I'm just saying possibly something has to do with how big the udder is, how much milk is, is being produced. Uh, there may be something there. I don't know. With this third example here, I really like the way this bag sits or this udder sits. Also as a personal preference, I like the fact that her teats have more separation between them. I feel like, especially in a milking cow scenario, this would be a better experience for the person that was milking her to have that separation between the teats. So as a personal preference, there's there's quite a bit that I like about this udder. Uh, this would be probably the most extension that I would want to see, but I, I like the fact that you can see her bag. Uh, her teats are a little bit more cone-shaped, which uh, if it gets too cone-shaped, I've read can cause a problem where it'll possibly make it to where it's difficult for newborn calves to get all of the colostrum that they need. Uh, I've never experienced that problem with this particular cow. One thing that I don't particularly like, she's got two very defined teats on the back, making the fifth and sixth teat. Now this is pretty common, especially in the Dexter breed, but hers are a little bit more defined than most. So that would be one gripe that I have. These don't cause any problem uh, at all. And like I said, they're quite common. I'm sure there's cows out there that don't have them at all. The other two cows that were on this list also have them. They're just a lot smaller to where they're not as noticeable. And if you have any cows like this, or if you don't want your cows to have these, the general practice is, is to just snip them off with scissors when, uh, that when they're first born. This fourth cow's udder is a decent looking udder as far as suspension, suspension goes or, or support. Uh, I, I, I don't mind this udder at all. But as I flip around here to the other side of it, you'll notice that there's basically two teats that are kind of fused into one. Uh, this is the only cow on the farm that's like this and really the only cow that I've ever seen like this. This has not caused a problem for this cow, but it's quite unsightly. Uh, in my opinion. So if I would have known what I know today, I probably wouldn't have taken this cow to my farm. Although, that being said, this cow raises amazing calves. I mean, her calves grow at a rate that exceeds everybody else's calves. So there's a possibility that uh, when that calf latches on to that teat, it's like having two straws in a cup, uh, maybe. I don't know. Uh, possibly down the road, it'll cause a problem. Up until this point, it hasn't caused a problem. It just looks really weird. So uh, other than that, uh, there's not a big problem with this udder. But just wanted to point that out as something to keep an eye out for when you're looking at, at um, cattle is the how uniformly spaced the teats are. You're, you're going to want to keep an eye out for that. So I put this next one in here. This is actually a, a first time heifer. She's due to have her first calf here in about two weeks. But I put this in here just because I wanted to point out that two weeks ago, I could have walked by this heifer and you couldn't even see a bag or teats or anything unless you like looked up under. Uh, so like I said, she's within about two weeks 
of having her very first calf. And I just noticed today while I was out there filming that uh, she's really starting to show her bag now. Uh, and you can see her teats are, are really growing. So this is a, a really good indicator if you have first time heifers on the farm that they're getting close to having that calf. And another thing to point out on this one is that, that the real judging of the udder should take place within about 24 hours of them having a calf. That's when the udder is the fullest. And if there is a problem with suspension, whether it's going to hang one way or the other or do something funny, that would be the time that those problems would be the most noticeable. And now on to the bad udders. This is Lily, and Lily has a bad udder. Now, I didn't know that Lily had a bad udder when I bought her because I just didn't know what I was looking for. If I'm being honest, I probably thought, oh, wow, she makes a lot of milk or something like that because I just didn't know what I was looking for. But this is what a bad udder looks like. Uh, it's lost its suspension all the way across the board. It hangs down really low to the ground. If you watch here, when she takes a step, she basically kicks it every single time she takes a step. And I made a video with Lily where I was showing that I got to use my calving pin for the first time because she wouldn't let her newborn calf latch on. And that may have been part of that problem was just the fact that her udder is so bad and the, the teat placement is not in the right place and the calf was just having a, a real hard time getting on there. Uh, but other than that, it makes it more susceptible to injury and it's just not a good thing all the way around. Uh, her calf is growing and doing okay, but as a registered animal, this is not something that we want to pass along in the breed. So this would be one that if you see something like this, I would probably say on a registered Dexter cow, I would probably recommend you to pass if you see an udder like this. And on to the last and worst one. This is Holly. She's the oldest cow on the farm. She's uh, 12 years old now. And she has basically now suffered what is the ultimate consequence of this all. Uh, initially, it just looks bad. And it, uh, you know, is kind of just a appearance thing for a while. But as they get older and older... Her problem got significantly worse on this last calf that she had. And as you can see, now her front two quarters are basically dry because of this problem. And so she's only producing about half the milk that she could be producing. And it's been very noticeable on how fast this last calf is growing compared to some of the other calves on the farm. Uh, so that's the reason why I picked her for the last and worst example is because, uh, like I said, it's not just a, a, a appearance problem now. It's become an actual problem. So now that you know what a good udder looks like and what a bad udder looks like, how can we make sure that when we're buying a heifer calf uh, that she's not going to end up having a bad udder? Or... How can we know if we're buying a bull calf that when he grows up and starts producing calves of his own, that those heifers or cows won't eventually have a bad udder as well? I don't think there's a surefire way to never have a cow on your farm with a bad udder. But the way that you're going to want to do this to help your chances out is by looking at the mother of that heifer calf or that bull calf uh, because generally they're going to they're going to pass on the trait uh, so if you're buying a bull calf especially if you're paying a premium price for them you're going to want to ask to see the mother of that bull calf if if her udder is good and intact and she's you know three four five years old uh, and had several calves already then you can 
be pretty sure that uh, the the calves that he has or that he produces, he sires, are going to have good udders on them. Uh, same thing with the heifer calf. If, if you look at her mother and then you could even go one step f further and look at her father's mother uh, if you really wanted to be sure. Uh, but that's the way that you're going to be sure that the animals that you're buying for your farm are going to have good udder confirmation. So hopefully this has helped you guys out and will help you to avoid making the same mistake that I made. If, if the video has been helpful for you guys, make sure you hit the like button. And if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to Dexter Ranch. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.